Okay, guys, I'm here for episode 21 of Revis of Revisiting the Rumble, the review series I revisit every Rumble from two from 1988 till 2014. Uh, this has taken me over a month, but I'm almost done with it. But I don't put myself on a limit when I do these kind of big series. It gives me more time to work on it than do it the way I want to do it. So, the 21st Royal Rumble took place on January the 27th, 2008 from Madison Square Garden in New York City. This is a five-match card, so our maximum star rating is 25. The opening contest is a career-threatening match. Ric Flair versus MP versus MVP. Storyline in this match was that the next time Ric Flair lost a match, he would be forced to retire. Needless to say, that kind of took away some stuff in it, since you probably knew when it was going to be, especially after they announced the first Hall of Fame inductee for that year. But, uh, this is a... meh. It's not a good match, but it's not a bad match. It's somewhere in the middle, but not necessarily average. Uh, there's a nice spot where MVP thinks he won. Flair is his phone on open. Charles Robinson stops the three count because he sees it. He counts three but waves it off when he realizes that Flair's foot's on the bottom rope. Uh, so, and then Flair makes uh, MVP tap out with the figure four. This is a one and a half star match. So our next match is Chris Jericho versus JBL. This was a... Uh, Chris Jericho's first real, well, second real rivalry since returning to the WWE in December, the day after Survivor Series 2007. Uh, and it came about when Chris Jericho was thrown into JBL at Arm again in 2007. So here he is having this match. JBL leading into this would choke him out with a cowbell or something, drag him around the ring and all that, or, or the arena or something. Uh... This match, not a lot happens in. There is blood in it, which makes a lot of sense, because this is kind of a grudgy situation. This will be one of the last times you see blood in the WWE, though, is shortly after this blood was phased out altogether, to the point where if someone does get busted open, they have to stop the match to remove the blood. Uh, but it does help, it does make sense in the match, to have the blood here. And in this blood is by Chris Jericho and not JBL. Probably would have worked better if it's Jericho busting JBL open, but what do I know? Uh, Jericho gets his qualified by hitting JBL with a chair. And then he chokes out JBL, but JBL still wins. Uh, two stars. Tad better than the opener, but not the best. So then we get the World Heavyweight Championship. Edge versus Rey Mysterio. Two guys who have good chemistry with each other. But this is not one of their better matches, primarily because this is at the height of the whole Edge and Vicky Guerrero relationship, which I want to erase from my memory half the time when I, have, when I talk about it. Uh, since that's all they've ever done with Vicky Guerrero when she ever was a general manager and a 40 figure, someone was in love with her or some weird thing. And she never understood it was for her power, kind of diminishes being a general manager in some ways. At least with this particular storyline, it does. Uh, Edge, uh, Mysterio won a beat-the-clock challenge to get this match. Uh, and the finish is... It, Mysterio's going for the 619. Vicky gets up on the apron. And Ray gives accidentally gives her the 619 and then jumps into the spear. And Edge wins the match. It's two and a half stars. Uh... So then we get the WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus Jeff Harvey. Oh, excuse me, Jeff Hardy. Uh, yeah, that was a Mike Adamley joke, because Mike Adamley actually originally called Jeff Hardy Jeff Harvey. Now, that's edited out on the WWE Network, because I guess I don't want to make Mike Adamley look like a complete another idiot. So, Jeff Hart, so Jeff got this match by defeating Triple H at uh, Armageddon 2007. Uh, this is an okay match. I mean, it's not... Good. It's not like really super good. It's not one of Wharton's best matches, but it is one of the few matches as a heel Randy Orton ever managed to win clean, which is amazing because he actually does here. Uh, uh, Jeff goes for the twist of fate, and Orton reverses that into the RKO. One, two, three, retains the uh, WWE Championship. And Jeff Hardy went to. No way out to be in the Elimination Chamber that he almost won. 
But then he was supposed to win money in the bank, got suspended for drugs, and, well, CM Punk ended up the beneficiary of that. So that brings us to the 2008 Royal Rumble match, which, by the way, Taz and Joey Styles, their only job for this match, for this pay-per-view, was to call the Royal Rumble along with the other two broadcast teams. So the broadcasting of this Rumble match is a tad bit screw up, screwed up here. Because you got three announced teams talking over each other, and one of them had to sit through four matches that had nothing to do with any of them. You couldn't have thrown in an ECW championship here? Chavo was champion, you couldn't have had him defend against CM Punk? Anyway, Michael Buffer announces the uh, Royal Rumble for some odd reason. I guess because they're in Madison Square Garden? I don't, I, I don't get this. Uh... Undertaker's number one, Shawn Michaels is number two, making this one of the very few Royal Rumbles that the two guys who ended one Royal Rumble started the next one. This would not happen again, to my knowledge, until the 2016 Royal Rumble, where Roman Reigns and Rusev started the Royal Rumble. Uh, it might have happened one other time before that, but I don't think it did. Uh, so, But it might have. I could be wrong. So... As always, description box will have the uh, entry order and longest lasting and most eliminations. Uh, and this was the first Royal Rumble to be won by a surprise entrant in the concept of what a surprise entrant is. Uh, and that entrant was the number 30 entrant, John Cena, returning from his, uh, what was it, torn... Uh, some shoulder injury or bicep, tricep or something. Yeah. When your daddy was supposed to be out for like six months and you returned on like four. Those John Cena healing powers at times. And I don't even, if he was 100% clear or not, I don't even know. But that's not me to judge on that. Uh, final four here are Evolution and Kane. Well, not Evolution and Kane in the sense of Evolution and Kane. But they're Batista, Triple H, Cena, and Kane. So, two members of Evolution and John Cena. That's not like the next year's Final Four, which is an even bigger and interesting Final Four. Uh, Evolution eliminate Kane, and then Triple H eliminates Batista. Come down to Triple H, Cena. And then Cena dumps over Triple H with the attitude adjustment. Uh... And wins the 2008 Royal Rumble. And instead of cashing, and then instead of waiting to WrestleMania to get his title shot, he cashes it in at No Way Out. And he still got the title match at WrestleMania, which made the match at No Way Out utterly pointless. Uh, so the Rumble itself is a three star match. It's the best match on the card, even if Hornswoggle was somehow in this Royal Rumble. And got an elimination, by the way. He eliminated Miz. Who? Uh, so out of ton, uh, so out of twenty five stars, this show gets an eleven and a half. So that's right outside. That is right outside of C. So it's a very high C minus, being one star away from it. Being one star away from a C. This will be in the re in the revisiting Rumble playlist. If you like this video, like button down there, subscribe button down there. Thank you for watching. Bye.